Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel, Deb Chanel's 48's World, where we get down and do reviews, okay? We're going to be talking about um, Marlo Hampton and um, her discussions or her beliefs that Kenya Moore is basically trying to infiltrate, take over, uh, take down Nene Leak so she can be seen as the queen of the show, okay? But I don't think that's possible. <laughs> Because Candy Burris and a host of the other cast members seem to think that they are queens in their own rights as well. So I don't know how far that's going to run. But basically, I've told myself that I'm going to have to separate these women and make them individuals uh, on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because all of them have shown me that they cannot possibly possibly be friends in real life and i say that because of what i'm really watching on tv i have taken the liking to what nini says uh basically that these girls are her co-workers she comes to do her job real housewives of atlanta is her job she has a certain uh piece of energy as well as um a type of entertainment that she must bring on her end in order to receive and continue to receive her benefits she gets from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, mainly her paycheck. Okay, so she has said in the past that these are her co-workers, her constituents, her colleagues, and that's it. You know, if they break bread on the show, they do this and that on the show, and people get the impression that they are friends then let it have be let it be what they feel what they assume is what is happening because honey i only come to work and i do my job and i leave and i leave them itches right where they need to be that's what nini has told us and i'm beginning to really feel like she's right because from the past seasons of the real housewives of atlanta and just specifically talking about uh, season 12 up to the fourth episode that we are shown all of these doggone women have been into it it's like they don't know anything about loyalty respect friendship compassion and empathy they don't they all lose it in one frame of realistically thinking and logically reasoning on a human being's part you understand what i'm saying so going forward i'm gonna have to look at these people and get my commentary on the job that they're uh performing f to get their paycheck at their place of employment because these these women can't possibly can't possibly uh love each other i'm sorry i can't see it because if these are which is you feel that these are your friends i hate to see who you are, your enemies are okay because sometimes the antics that they put on this show it just might be fake and fraudulent scripted in but to say certain things you would think how it comes out that these people really mean what they say and they say what they mean you know how we have that whole thing about when a person gets drunk and they start talking we say out of their head but then the things that they're expressing even though they're under in the influence It'd be some truth in that situation because they'd be speaking on truthful situations that have happened or recently have happened. And what they're really feeling is what they really feel in real life. Because like I said, drunk tell the truth and children tell definitely the truth. Okay. But anyway, I said that to say this. Um, we're going to get on into this little article that Celebrity Insider had put out on. Let's see. It was December 1st, and it was written by Ricky Mathers, Mathers over there at Celebrity Insider. She's a, uh, I want to say a journalist and a correspondent for them. And the title of her article reads, Marlo Hampton thinks Kenya Moore wants NeNe Leake's position. Now, everybody has a position, okay? Everybody has a position on the Real Housewives of Atlanta sitcom show. They are expected to do certain things, to bring certain things, uh, and enact certain things on the show to build up ratings and to uh, draw the community in. Uh, the ones that do specialize in definitely 
uh, going in and, and watching them on uh, a de- not a daily basis, but a weekly basis and always knowing what's going on, the comments and goings. And content creators such as ourselves or myself, they lend hand in wanting to see how we're seeing it, uh, the different episodes and what they edit it up and put out for us to partake in what's our spin on it how do we feel what's our perspectives of uh, on what we were shown by what they put out so it does washes each other's hands you know what i'm saying it gives us a platform to speak what we feel and have other people that have kindred spirits such as ourselves and can identify what we're talking about as well as you know the ones that show different opinions than what we were discussing and what we believe in they sit and make their points, their point of views. They evaluate the same way as we do. They just don't have a platform or don't wish to have a platform to talk out loudly about a show that's being presented on TV. So um, we're going to go on into this article that um, Ricky uh, Mathers put out. Uh, and, of course, y'all heard the title. Marlo Hampton pretty much believes that... Um, Kenya Moore is trying to come or she wants Nene Leakes' position. But, you know, you can't really have a position such as Nene Leakes unless you're an OG. Now, of course, she's a self-appointed person who deemed herself as queen of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, y'all know I don't took my card from her as me seeing her that way. I did at first, and she was holding it real tight and squarely. You know what I'm saying? She was representing. But that last episode where she walked out on Marlo, I'm still mm-hmm. waiting for her to redeem herself. She didn't redeem herself in episode four. Uh, she was still kind of whining. And she made some sense about she just got tired of Marlo uh, saying, you need to apologize. You need to apologize. And she was waiting for Cynthia to apologize. But hell, they both should have said, one, two, three, apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just let it be. But as we know how reality TV is kind of messy, it's mindless drama and they go back and forth you know they want to have these crime spells that oh you know they did me wrong she did me wrong it was just a wrong situation you know and most people want to come up smelling like a rose even though they're acting bad oh just bad downright bad you know that you need to be put in a corner whooped for it you know what i'm saying but anyway Let's go on to see what this article was talking about. But like I said, all of them do play parts and they want that uh, main squeeze type position. But, you know, Nene has been really the longest one on the show besides Marlo being a friend. And then, you know, the rest of them trickle down. But, you know, it's no, it's no point of saying who's this and who's that. Pretty much we're looking at who's giving us the best drama, who's giving us the best reads, who's sticking out mostly of who you think of when you do think of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So when you're pondering on that idea and you're not thinking about any of the women in your mind, you just hear a voice that says Real Housewives of Atlanta. I know some of y'all going to say Kenya Moore. Most of y'all, I'm pretty sure, going to say Nene Leakes. Then you may think about... You might even think about Cynthia before Candy. Because the only time I think about Candy is when somebody's making boss moves and they're moving in silence. Then I strictly think about Candy Burrs. But when you do for me, and it's not just because Nene gives us great antics and words to live by, you know, with her little bloop or bye girl or bye Felicia or whatever she be saying. They do stick with you. They do become synonymous of what you're trying to look for. Uh, in an episode when Nene's missed out or she's not being shown. But I do do think of, uh, when you say Real Housewives of Atlanta, I do think of Nene first. And sometimes I even think about Cynthia because she is an OG on the show as well. But with Cynthia not having a backbone, you really don't put her up on the forefront. Now, if you're talking about somebody timid, shy, let people walk over you, yeah, Cynthia's going to definitely come to my mind as that keyword of that title. Okay, it's just how I think. But anyway, um, let's get into the article. It said, ne- was this Kenya Moore and Nene Leakes are about to start the biggest feud of the season on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. To one surprise, Marlo Hampton is Team Nene. Now go figure that. We all knew that, okay? I wouldn't be surprised if she gunning for Nene's position. You know how they say you play in silence? You play like you like the person and you just stab them in the back? <laughs> 
But anyway, that's just my hypothesis. Don't have no validity of it. It's just that's my feeling, okay? Uh, it goes on to say the Real Housewives of Atlanta star stopped to chat with People Magazine today or TV where she was asked about Kenya, someone who she hasn't been cool with since season eight. Everything is shady about Kenya, Marlo is expressing. Nothing is sweet about Kenya except for her baby. See, that's what I understand. When people are asked a direct question, why do you have half ass answer it? Now, if they said, do you really think Kenya Moore is shady? You could have said yes or no. You didn't have to bring up other factors, layering why, and giving them um, a opposition or something opposite to think of it. But you're still shading them in the same way. It's like a nice, nasty shade. Just go on and put it out there. Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore is the most shadiest woman and div uh, div what do you call it? devious woman you could possibly think of and sometimes delusional okay but that's just how some people see her i kind of think she is delusional but aren't we all at some points of in our life when we're wanting something okay or we wanting some type of title or position especially if we know we don't have the credentials we know we don't um have the fortitude to have that position but we think we know this person that person and we cool with them you know kind of that nepotism type thing going on or that favoritism type thing going on we think we deserve it you know what i'm saying but that's not necessarily always the truth but that was my poem my sidebar let's get back to the article it said uh the real housewives of atlanta star stopped to chat with people magazine and they were asked a question about uh, a Kenya Moore and how she felt about it. And, of course, she said, you know, she was shady. Everything shady about Kenya Moore except for her baby girl, Brooklyn. Brooklyn is the sweetest child uh, you should ever know. And that is true. She's very personable, has a lot of personality. And, oh, no, she just make you, like, want to be like her. She's jumping all around doing crazy stuff. She make you want to jump around do all kind of crazy stuff. She's just that type of kid. Um, she goes on to say, Kenya shady. She looks at you shady. She walks by you shady. She's shady, shady, shady. Okay. Just watch the show. And, you know, most of us would probably say Kenya, yeah, it's shady, but the rest of them are too. You know, you got to call a spade on every last one of them. And all of them have the, their own parts their own individual shade of one another it just wasn't that so pronounced you know like cynthia over there she do her shading uh off camera or off the subject it's not like live and in front of and by she get mad and people kind of jumping on her but hell look that time look like she want to cry when she is trying to shade then you got the shade that nini throws out where hey if the hits if the bullet she spray hits you Touch and agree with your spirit, then just take it and move on. Now, you know, Portia, she's going to put them hands on you, all right? But she's been in anger management, so we're going to give her a, a, a pass. Can, Candy, she's going to start crying and carrying on. Then, you know, don't mess with folks that seem like they're quiet and a little moody, but they start crying all of a sudden. Child, you better leave them folks alone because they're like a time bomb. They'll go off on you and you don't even know where they're coming from. But, you know, it just is what it is. And, you know, of course, Kenya don't hold her tongue. She's just like her nemesis, Nene. Go on and say what she got to say. She don't care who she hurt. It's just what she feels at the time. She thinks, you know, whatever she feels in her brain needs to come out of her mouth and let it hit whoever it needs to hit. Okay? Direct hit. Target. You know, secure. Blow them up. <laughs> But if you try to get on her, oh, it's another thing coming. Everybody want to jump on her side saying, you know, well, you know, let's let's look overlook Kenya's, you know, past. Or let's overlook what she said. She didn't mean it. She was going through all that. Black like, girl, please. People, please. Go on about your business. But going back to the article, it said, um... She went on to say that the only time she had a friendship with Kenya was when she wanted her to stop 
being friends with Nene while pretending to be her close friend. So she also accuses her of using her for her fashion. Now, I don't know too much about the fashion. I remember something about Marlo trying to show her how to dress or what to buy them, you know, look more richer or lucrative like you got money. Because, you know, like people say, you dress the part. If you look like a million dollars, people might think you got a million dollars. You know, it's just perspective and perception that you give people. You want to have them thinking about you, like when you go for a job interview, you're going to be coming pressed to address uh, the situation, the, the circumstances, and you're going to try to talk your way through the interview like you know everything about that position, when it was started, when it was developed, how it produced after, what was the marketing share. You know, you're just going to go through some of everything. And then you're going to come in looking the part. You know, your hair going to be done up. Your, your face is going to be beat. Your dress or your suit you're wearing is going to be on point. I mean, just everything going to be sharp as a tag, you know, as well as your presentation that you have to give to them to kind of, I wouldn't say seduce them, but kind of intrigue them to say, ooh, I want to see more. I think, you know, she can conquer the position we want filled. Let's hire her, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, on that own first impression because you had so much confidence and you had so much high self-esteem of yourself. So I think that's what the women want on this show, and they demand some of them, but them uh, were two of them. I ain't going to say nothing about Cynthia. She just want to be somebody's bride, and I think she will be pretty much okay in that position. But uh, those women right there, honey, they out for the juggler. They don't care who they have to take down. They wants to be queen of the show, okay? They wants where everybody knows their name and want to see them on every taping of an episode, okay? But that's just how I see it. You know, I'm sure it's going to be other people say this, that, and the third. And it is what it is, okay? Uh, then it goes back to the article. says, when asked if Moore was jealous of leaks, she did not hold back, okay? Absolutely, okay? I think she wants her position. She wants to be an OG, okay? But you really can't be an OG when you didn't start with the group. I think that's what a lot of people get a misconception of because that's how I view it. When I say OG, I look at the age of that person and how long they've been on the show. You know, not that they came and went for whatever reason and came back. No, were they one of the first people that brought out the show when it was first aired, when it first cast, this, that, and third. That's what I like. I mean, that's what I show and deem as an OG, you know, a starter or creator or something. And then you put, you know, your little spin on it. If they do uh, have a year spans of, you know, their age is like 40, 50 plus, then you want to pay homage to them because they don't should have experienced something enough to say, yeah, they, they're very experienced. They're well thought out. They're well elevated so you know let me just you know pay them a little homage they don't been in the grind you know just like Tupac when it came to rapping or Whitney Houston when it came to ballads or Luther Vadros when it came to balance and romance hey them the OGs them the pros honey huh? you got to lend way to them because they uh you know had the pathway built for other comers to succeed then when it was that time but um you know, that's my sidebar again. It's my edification of how I view things from my perspective. Okay. Then it, it goes back to say the self-proclaimed queen of Real Housewives of Atlanta would definitely agree with her BFF. Nene has al already told Entertainment Tonight, these girls, to me, now she's speaking from her own perspective, of course, all seem to want to be queen or the one that everybody thinks of when they say housewives. And I don't think that's that's possible. I think there's one queen and there's a lot of princesses. Now, just to make a clear reference or a comparison to like when you think of the Real Housewives of Platonic, who do you really think of? Even though, you know, not necessarily thinking of the age group or whatever. But who do you think of? Like when I said it to myself, the first person I thought about was Karen Hooger and um, Giselle Bryant. You know, and it, it may, I haven't watched that show in ages, but, you know, it just gives me the, you know, for lack of a better word, the thoughts of who comes to mind first when you think of that show. Uh, and you can do your, you can do that analysis with any program uh, you watch on TV or each movie you may partake in. You know, who do you think of when you say that movie? Like, Feel Good Me 
Who do I think of? Straight off the bat. I think of Tom Cruise. I think of Demi Moore. I mean, some people might say, you know, the other players uh, of the game, but that's just why. Not that they were just so uh, recognizable. It's just what they gave to the acting of that particular movie. Now, some people would have said Jack Nicholson, you know. And I'm like, I hear the only thing he said was, um... Uh, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> he was just arrogant throughout the whole movie. But the ones that showed compassion, they didn't give up on the people. Uh, you know, they were just working diligently, due diligently, on trying to get these guys free from this um, assassination that they were doing towards their character as well as their credibility. And, you know, we can go on and on and on and get sim similarities here and there regarding who do you first think of when somebody says a TV program or a, a situation. You know, it just is what sticks to your mind or who you thought was a great performer. So, yeah, when it does come to Real Housewives of Atlanta, I do think of NeNe Lease. Then the second one will probably be Cynthia Bailey because they are the elders of that group and they have been on the longest. I think even Cynthia was on before Candy and Kenya. I'm thinking if I'm mistakenly, let me know about that, okay? Because I'm not quite sure. Or, you know, I used to think of Kim Zosiak, but I don't anymore because she's been gone so much from the show. And, you know, she left in a quick, fast, and her type situation. Maybe because they gave her a spinoff. I don't know. And she just totally, you know, just left the show altogether. But, you know, just hear what it is. But we're going back to the article. It said the Broadway star. Now, that's another thing. When they self-proclaim themselves and then they just spend one time on an acting gig or something in the theater. And their claim to fame is like they don't been a part of Bravo, you know, for a lifetime or at least two or three years. You know, for you can say, yeah, I accomplished that feat and I was very well solidified in it. So I know the ins and the outs and the comes and goings. But she only had one stink on Broadway. And then even with the um, Glee situation, she didn't have a really full season on Glee. But, you know, once you did it one time, you can put it on your resume and you can just go with it. And like, oh, OK. So now see why some people, you know, was trying to tell me that some of the um, reality TV stars, if um, they fill out their resume. Some of them put on their actresses and actors. And I'm like, hmm. Well, I guess they are acting. Even though it's supposed to be a reality show. Everything's supposed to be, you know, hunky-dory and downright crazy, you know, uh, when doing a reality. Because it's supposed to depict your real life and how you would handle certain situations that flows throughout your day. But as we know, things do get scripted in because everybody don't want to look at everybody, you know, getting along with everybody. Like, that's not true life. You do have some bumps and bruises along the way. So, ups and downs. And it just is what it is. So, I guess they have to give us some scripted uh, commentary or visuals for us to look at for us to even try to pay attention. But going back to the article, uh, they said the Broadway star and the twirling fan favorite has been going head to head in the media, which fans would go to see, would get to see play out on screen. Allegedly, there was an incident that took place in the cast trip to Greece where two nearly came to blows. This is reportedly the same argument that Kenya has been claiming that Nene tried to spit on her. And you know we're trying to see that, but I know they're going to have it either the last episode of the season or the next to the last episode. Uh, then it goes on to say, in addition to her ongoing feud with Lee's Kenya, was seen interrupting Hampton's hair company lunch party earlier this year that viewers were also watch and unfold and i'm like that's supposed to be the episode that is coming up for um episode five for season 12 which is this coming sunday so y'all definitely try to stay in tune with it you know god willing i'm gonna be right there looking at the punches and the blows the jabs the knockout the put you know nah, nah. <laughs> marlo ain't gonna do that she kind of a little bit too classy to put hands on anybody so it seems like they're gonna have a situation where they both gonna be on the mic uh, talking to each other and, you know, formulating, you know, opinions going back and forth, jabs here and there verbally. But all the women are supposed are all supposed to be there at this event. And then Kenya somehow comes and crashes it with her own beauty supplies, uh, 
secrets and in uh what do you call it promotional items from her hairline care and i'm like who does that and i know she had to get the permission of the producers because nobody gonna really have can you come up there and they event without security trying to stop them saying baby this is my little thing where you coming up here with this can you more publicity she didn't have you on her uh invitation list to you know have all this stuff going on you know they would have stopped that so i know bravo probably told her yeah you can come on that a bit a little more drama and that's what you're adding uh for your scripted part in this particular episode hopefully it, it, it fares well because you know we don't pay you our money so we need you to uh produce some ratchetness <coughs> over here okay we want to upset the you know the the delicate balance that seems to have been woven in in all these episodes like it's some type of camaraderie going on but we know there's not no camaraderie going on they've been paid they've been hired to produce certain things and like you know some people have told me in my comment section they're actresses they're actors so i'm like kind of takes away from the whole thing as a reality show because everything's supposed to be organic or everything's supposed to be organically, you know, being woven together to show us some type of normalcy. But some upsetting moments, of course, to make us have that thought-provoking light bulb go on in our heads to see how we can figure things out, how it should have played out. You know, like a good movie coming toward the end. And there's so much uh, plot or setting being developed to where the, the ending should be spectacular. You know what I'm saying? It should be something that you knew was going to happen or it just come out the blue like, damn, I didn't even anticipate that happening. So, I don't know. Seems like they keep twerking it and, and, and going this way and that way and they don't really give us anything. And then we left with all this bunch of mess at the end. Like, what? That don't even seem right. This was a bunch. You know how we get when it's coming towards reunion time. So, uh, yeah, that's all I had for this particular uh, video. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it. Some of y'all can definitely put y'all comments down there, which y'all definitely dutifully do from time to time, especially if I'm talking about Kenya Moore. Y'all don't agree. <laughs> but like I said, love them all. Love them all. Just be respectful. Don't be verbally cussing me out and stuff because, you know, you can make your opinions known. Um, cause I know it can be, cause I know a lot of you have made your opinions known. So y'all do that. Let me know, you know, um, what y'all felt about the situation. Is Marlo, uh, Hampton right? Is Kenya really trying to come for Nene's position? Or do y'all think Marlo on the sideline is trying to look in to see when she can come in and take Nene's position? Cause that's what I'm looking at. I mean, like, they ain't friends. They ain't nowhere near friends. All of them are trying to get that mad, that bag. And I know Marlo, that money be on her mind all the time. Cause that last episode when Nene called herself shooting out the door on her. Not paying her no mind. She was telling Nene on camera, uh, talking to herself, but she really wasn't talking to herself. She was just putting her little read in there. I didn't worry about getting your money and leave all this other foolishness alone. You know, like, she, what's this? Some attitude? Leave, check your attitude and get that bag or something like that. I'm like, girl, go on, go on, Marlo. Tell her the truth. It ain't about fortune or friendships. It's all about making that money and being the one that people want to see when every time a, a season or episode is being shown they be like where you at where you at you know checking for you like when they don't see you on that particular episode they're like damn you know why, why they ain't have Dale Schnell up in there I was looking for Dale to say something you know what I'm saying just like I do I, I do look for Nene to come in start crap I look for Ken to come in and start crap but all thing about Ken she always be picking on people that ain't ready to give her back that uh, fire. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, why don't you pick at Candy sometime? <laughs> why don't you go back and pick at Portia sometime, Kenya? Damn, you all trying to get on Nene. Uh-uh. I mean, not Nene, uh, Cynthia. And then try to mess with Tanya sometime. Like, Tanya gonna fool you. She's gonna tear up on your behind and be giving you back some slick shade. You better leave that girl alone. <laughs> But that's all I have for this video, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see you next video. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, I love it when y'all come on over here to the house and sit down and talk with me so we can do a little chit chat. <laughs> I'll always love you. Yeah, I've been wanting to say that for a while. <laughs> y'all take care. Bye.